Okay, hi guys. I hope you are doing well. A lot of students they get confused when it comes to measurement of impairment uh, loss uh, on the goodwill. So basically, uh, this video is going to help you people understand that how exactly do we recognize the impairment loss on a goodwill? Uh, if the goodwill is a full goodwill and if the goodwill is a partial goodwill. So let me just give you a bit of a guidance that how do we actually go about doing this calculation. Now, the first thing that you need to understand is that, uh, that what exactly is an impairment? You know this thing. So the impairment loss actually arises whenever the carrying amount of the asset exceeds its recoverable amount. So whenever the carrying amount of the asset exceeds its recoverable amount, we say the impairment has taken place. So let's say if the carrying amount of the asset is 100,000, and the recoverable amount is let's say in 92,000. So we end up recoverable amount is let's say 100,000. Sorry, carrying amount is 100,000, whereas the recoverable amount is 104,000. So we say there is no impairment loss because the impairment only arises whenever the carrying amount exceeds the recoverable amount. Now, so for example, if we talk about a cash generating unit, a CGU cash generating unit. Whenever we talk about the measurement of impairment loss for a CGU, so what is the approach that we adopt? <clears throat> um, as per IS 36, if you have uh, identified an impairment loss on a CGU, so what you need to do is that you need to allocate that loss in this manner. Initially, you got to allocate this loss to the goodwill and then to the remaining assets on a pro rata basis. So first of all, in case if there is any impairment loss that arises on a cash generating unit, you got to allocate it to the goodwill and then to the remaining uh, assets on a pro rata basis. Also, when we talk about the word remaining assets, just make sure that those assets which are already measured at the fair value or at the fair value less cost to sell under the relevant IFRS, the impairment loss is not allocated to them. So like, for example, if you have got inventory, if you have got financial assets, if you have got investment property, you've got PPE, you've got intangibles, et cetera, et cetera. You've got trade receivable. Now, what happens is that the inventory is already measured at the lower of cost NRV under IS2. So the impairment loss under IS36 is not allocated to it. The financial assets are being measured under IFRS 9. The investment property, if measured at fair value, if measured at fair value. So if the investment property is at fair value model, it's already at fair value under IS 40. You don't have to allocate impairment loss. For property plant equipment, yes, the impairment loss would be allocated. Intangibles, yes, the impairment loss would be allocated. And again, for the receivable also, the impairment loss won't be allocated. So generally, it's the PPE, it's the intangibles, it's the investment property at cost model to whom the impairment loss is allocated. So in case, if you have got any impairment loss left after allocation on the goodwill, it has to be recognized on the remaining assets. And the remaining assets would include these assets. It won't include the assets which are already measured at fair value under their relevant IFRS. Now, important thing to understand is that, let's say there is a subsidiary and the carrying amount of the assets of the subsidiary, assume that there's a subsidiary, it's 80% owned by the parent. The carrying amount of the subsidiary is $100,000. And the goodwill in that subsidiary, um, the recoverable amount, the recoverable amount is, let's say, Recoverable amount is 117500. I repeat, the recoverable amount is 117500. Now, how exactly are we going to be recognizing the impairment loss? Let's have a bit of a discussion about it. You would have to see that if this goodwill is a full goodwill or if this goodwill is a partial goodwill. When we talk about the full goodwill, that means it is for the 100% business. 
And when we talk about the partial goodwill, this actually means that it is only for, I bet when we talk about the partial goodwill, it means it's only for, in this case, for the 80% of the business, it's not for the remaining 20%, it's not there. Now, how exactly are we gonna calculate the goodwill? Uh, how do we calculate the impairment? Try to understand. You would say carrying amount of asset is 100,000. You would say uh, the goodwill is 15,000. So hence the total carrying amount of the subsidiary or the CGU is 115,000. Now what is actually gonna happen is that if there is a recoverable amount of 117,500, hence what happens is the impairment loss is going to be zero. Why? Because carrying amount is lower than recoverable amount. Why? Because carrying amount is lower than recoverable amount. <laughs> now, if we talk about the partial goodwill, I repeat, if we talk about the partial goodwill, what happens with respect to the partial goodwill is the carrying amount of the net assets of the subsidiary are 100,000. The goodwill is 15,000, but this is for 80% of the business. So what is it that you need to do? You need to gross up the goodwill. How do you gross up the goodwill? You say 15,000 divided by 0 0.8. So that means you're gonna get the goodwill for 100% of the business and that 100% of the business's goodwill is going to be what? It's gonna be 15,000 divided by 0 0.8 gives you 18,750. Now the whole business has a carrying amount of 118,750. Since the recoverable amount pertain to whole business, therefore we need to have the carrying amount of the whole business. So hence, resultingly, what is actually going to happen is that you would have the recoverable amount as 117,500. And hence, there is actually going to be an impairment loss. How is that impairment loss going to be? That impairment loss is going to be what? It has to be 1250. Now, so basically, uh, the impairment loss of this 1250 is going to be allocated to the goodwill in entirety, which is 1250. Now, since you had not recognized the whole of the goodwill in the financial statement, therefore you cannot recognize the whole of the impairment loss in the PNL. So what could happen is that the impairment loss to be recognized in PNL is also gonna be 80%. So how is it actually gonna be? It's gonna be 1250 into 80% gives you what? 1,000. So 1,000 is the impairment loss that you would have to recognize. Now, let me just give you a bit of a guidance. Basically, if the goodwill is full goodwill, you don't gross up because it's already 100% good. If it's a partial goodwill, you gross up. You gross up and you gross up and this remains the total amount and this is how things are actually gonna be. So resultingly, the impairment loss of 80% is going to be recognized. So basically this was a video in which I had explained that how uh, impairment loss arising on a subsidiary is uh, determined when you have a full goodwill, when you have a partial goodwill. So I hope that you enjoyed the lecture. Uh, so thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much for the uh, queries that you people ask, keep asking the queries. So that gives me uh, more, uh, uh, um, uh, more reasons to prepare videos. Thank you.